Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got a MacBook Air here, it's an A1466, the absolute classic, which is still going strong and there's about 10,000 billion of them in circulation, so you see them all the time. A uh, very well documented laptop, this. So this apparently does not turn on. So let's plug in a charger and just see what we get. So I've got a MagSafe 2 here, I'll plug that in and you can see on my power meter on the side here, we'll just see what pops up. Okay, so we've got like 55 milliamps average, and there's no green light on the on the charger at all. So this tells me something immediately. That green light is called the one-wire circuit, um, and that's the system by which the laptop detects what charger is connected. Um, and it also changes color to indicate whether it's charging or not and stuff like that. Um, this is powered by PP3V42, which is the first, it's a three volt power rail and it's the first rail to switch on in a MacBook. And it's the first thing that gets power and, in, and starts the startup sequence. So um, if you have no green light on the charger, that means there's a problem with the one wire circuit, which also may indicate a problem with PP3V42. So we're expecting to see a fairly fundamental issue here. So let's roll the intro, get the back cover off of this and see if we can find out why. So with the back cover off, we've got honest dust. Uh, laptops get dusty, that's a thing, that's completely normal. Um, but if we look at the dust, we can look for patterns. There's no tidal marks, so there's no sign of liquid damage. The fact that everything is in perfect patterns as to where the components are, you can see the outline of the SSD, the Wi-Fi card, and so on. You know, no one's been poking around in here. There's no one's been jamming screwdrivers in this. Um, so the laptop itself is also dusty, but you know, again, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing any craters anywhere. Not seeing anything that's exploded. One of the places that I'm going to be looking at real close is this um, bridge cable here. Uh, this bridge ribbon, um, this connects a whole bunch of data signals from the DC inboard across to the main logic board, including the one wire circuit. So um, prop no green light on the charger can be an issue with the DC inboard or this cable or the connectors. So that's something that we're going to keep in mind. Um, so let's zoom in a little bit and we'll just start taking a couple of just pot shot measurements to see what we're seeing. So I'm going to set my multimeter into a voltage mode. We're going to put our black probe on any screw hole for ground. And I'm going to start with the fuse here under this big inductor. This is PPVus G3 hot, uh, which is the main power rail. And with just, the, um, with just the battery connected, we should just be seeing battery voltage here, which is going to be 7 or 8 volts. So do we have that? Right, 6.6. .6. So that's low. Uh, this is a two-cell battery. Um, so LiPo cells are 3.7 volts nominal, 3 volts minimum. So with a two-cell battery, that is 3.3 volts per cell. So the battery is extremely low, but it is there and it is passing voltage into the into the laptop. Um, so that is there. What about PP3V42? Is that alive? Yeah, it is. So probing through PP3V42, we've got 3.4 volts there. All right. If I just plug in the MagSafe connector again. Now I have a, okay, thanks. Now it's working. We have a light on the charger and we're pulling 700 milliamps and rising. It is now charging the battery. Thanks, I hate it. You know what, fun fact, when I started recording this video, I had the microphone muted. So the intro that you just watched was actually the second take. It didn't work twice in a row. And now it started working. This is why video making is hard, because sometimes stuff just starts working when you're trying to record a video about it. Okay. 
Maybe this thing just needs cleaning. Um, I'm gonna poke the I'm gonna poke the cables. I'm gonna poke it. I'm poking it all over. That doesn't seem to be bothering it at all, so it's not like a bad connection somewhere. All right. Well, I guess I'll turn it on. Ah. Power button. All right. All right, so this laptop does seem to have power now, but the power button doesn't seem to be wanting to turn it on. There's no response when I tap the power button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to close the lid and I'm gonna disconnect the battery. Now a MacBook Air should switch on if it's if it receives mains power with no battery connected. So let's plug that in again and see what it does. The answer to that is nothing. All right, let's get the logic board out of this thing so we can take a closer look. We also might discover more stuff while we're taking it apart. Alright, so looking at the back of this logic board, once again we've got a lot of dust and it's honest dust but also there's certainly enough dust here that um, this is the kind of dust that can start causing problems because dust traps moisture. So humidity in the air and stuff like that will stick into this dust and it will you would get corrosion because the, the moisture doesn't evaporate because it's clinging to the dust. So, uh, without brushing this down, let's go under the microscope and take a closer look. So starting at the top edge of the board and just moving down, you can see how we've got these clumps of dust here. And you can start seeing how that's just making patches of just grot in certain areas. And like, that's our BIOS chip there. That's the system clock generator, which looks pretty gross. And there, there we go. That's the money shot. That's what I was afraid, uh, that's what I was anticipating. Uh, this is one of the ISL chips, so it's one of the power management chips. I can't remember which one, but... Okay, so pause for a moment. During this video, I'm going to keep referring to this chip as the ISL chip. That's because I thought this was going to be the ISL6259. However, that's the regulator for PPBus G3 hot, not for the secondary rails. Uh, you can quite clearly see on the screen here that it has TPS written on it, which is a Texas Instruments pass. So please ignore me repeatedly calling it the wrong thing. Uh, it is a TPS chip. That little green there, that's where there's just some liquid has just accumulated and it's just started just eating into things. That might be our problem. That might also explain why we've got sort of intermittent behavior. Here's the SMC. Again, general grot there. That's our backlight chip. And then we've got Thunderbolt up in the corner here. All right, there's our DC inboard. Again, just very dusty. Nothing screamingly wrong, but extremely dusty. This guy does have sensors on it, um, but I wouldn't expect a problem with any of those sensors to prevent the laptop from switching on. It might give you like high fan speed and other problems like that, but not a no power situation. Okay, right, and our survey says... Nothing. 
Oh, there we go. There's an orange light. All right, that orange light is a bit dodgy. I think the lack of orange light we've been seeing, I think that's just a dodgy MagSafe connector. So I think that's a red herring. And that sort of 50 milliamps, that's, um, that's the bit we actually care about. Okay, so let's power this off and let's just clear all that dust off and see if anything happens. So some of you may have noticed that I'm now steering away from that corrosion patch. And the reason why I'm doing that is at this point, although it looks a little bit gnarly, I wasn't convinced at the time that that was actually the cause of the problem. Resistors can look gnarly like that and just not be a problem. So I'm going through the exhaustive diagnostic process to prove that that is our problem before we actually approach it. So this is more long-winded, but for the sake of the video and showing how the process works, it's more useful as a teaching method. Okay, so we've just dusted this thing off, which has removed the worst of the visible dust. Um, I just quickly went into the ports with a toothbrush as well just to make sure that there was no gunge in there because um, you can get um, you can get corrosion build up on the inside of the Thunderbolt port and things like that which can cause problems so right that's that done let's see if anything has changed nope no change okay so I think in that case it's gonna be time to start actually getting the schematics out and seeing how much power we're getting and where that power is getting to. Now because this board is extremely similar to the 00165 I'm going to have the schematic for that open as well because we've got a lot of notes and cheat sheet lists for the 00165 that are not on the 3437. Um, but as I say these boards are extremely similar so all of the boot up sequence and the vast majority of the rails and everything, we can use the reference guides for the 00165 to look at the 3437. So um, the first thing I'm going to check is I'm going to just check for some of our most important um, power on signals, which is all system power good. So I've got the charger connected now, and we're going to check for this signal all sys power good, which comes um, which connects between this chip and this chip and we're just going to see what that's looking like or oh, I could slide straight off that's cool and that is off okay that's fine so um, the, with that without this signal the laptop is not ready to turn on I'm also going to take a pot shot at um, PM sleep s4l and that is another ready to turn on signal that very, very commonly has problems. So we're also going to check that. Uh, now, PM Sleep S4L, that appears over here next to the SMC. Um, I'm going to quickly check which one it is. That appears at this guy here. Oh, 200 milliamps. That's fun. We've got a sort of a very limp-wristed PM Sleep S4L. Either way, it's not there. Okay, so in that case, we're going to jump straight into missing PM Sleep S4L diagnostics um, because we need that signal um, to go anywhere. Um, All Sys Power Good is an SO signal, um, and uh, SO is main power on. PM Sleep S4L is an S4 signal. Now we need we start from S5 and we climb up to S0. So we we care more about a missing S4 signal than we do uh, uh, than we do about an SO signal or S0. So once again, because I'm sitting in Flex Board View here, um, Flex Board View has all the cheat sheet notes and solutions available. And you can get this on the free version of um, Flexboard View as well. So go check it out. Um, so again, just to reiterate, uh, this board is a 3437. However, the notes are available on the 00165. So that's the one I'm using. The two are extremely similar. So uh, let's start going through missing PM Sleep S4L. So we need PPVRTC G3 Hot. So let's look for that. That is available at the um, uh, the clock gen chip that I pointed out earlier on. So 
So that's this guy up here. And that is visible there. 3.42. So that is present and correct. Next, I'm going to check RTC reset L. And this, along with the next bunch of signals, is on the back of the PCH, which is around here. There's a whole bunch of signals that I'm going to check here. So I'm now just going to blast through these signals one by one. So um, we're looking for, most of these are logic signals. So we're looking for 3.42 volts. Um, if a signal ends in underscore L, that means it's an active low signal. So, um, uh, so RTC reset L means when this is low, we are in reset, which means not working. So we, we want to see a high signal. Uh, so let's check that one. Present and correct. Cool. I'm now going to start busting down through all of these. Hello, 3V3S5 is at 1 volts. There's your problem. Okay. Right, we're missing PP3V3S5. Let's look into that. Right, so that is generated on the top of the board here. This is a fairly big standby rail, this. Um, this is why we're not getting very far, because we're missing an S5 rail. So remember what I said about um, S numbers? Um, we can't get to an S4 state for PM sleep S4L because we don't have S5. So, pow. There's our SSD connector. There's our big inductor. So we're expecting to see 1 volts here as well. Yeah, oh, it's minus one volts because I've got my probes the wrong way around. However, yeah. Okay, so let's power this off. So what else is on this line then? So we come out of this inductor, we go through this not current sense pin, and we become PP3VS5. Now the problem is, this powers lots of stuff. This is a standby rail that powers just a lot of standby logic signals that turn stuff on. So we're not really getting a lot of help here. We could, you know, look at all of these points in turn and see if there's anything suspicious there. But we might be hanging around a while. Alright, so we're seeing the low voltage there. So we do also have this. So what is this chip down here then? Let's look at what other clues we've got. This is this chip here is U7501, and it's kind of messed up in this area. So let's just search for that. So this is 3V3S5 power supply. So this chip is controlling that MOSFET that is outputting PP3V3S5. Okay, yeah, that makes sense now. That makes sense. All right, so that's our problem right there. So what are these guys in the corner? So if we have a look up here, what are these resistors doing? So if we look down here, you can see we've got R7560, and we've also got 7561, 7563. It's a resistor divider network, and we've got some we've got some signal wires coming off of this that go back up to the controller chip U7501 on the feedback lines and reference lines. So these feedback lines are basically the monitoring lines, so the chip can watch the rail to see if it's getting to the correct voltage. So because those resistors are messed up, the chip is getting is getting garbage data. So it's not able to regulate the line properly. So let's actually clean this bit up. The problem was staring us in the face. We'd already found it. However, I wasn't sure if it was relevant yet. Oop. So I'm just going to put some alcohol on that. 
Ah. So I'm just going to clean this up. And be a little bit gentle. There we go, that's looking a bit better. The tips of those resistors are a bit tarnished, but that's okay. All right, let's put power on this again. There's a good chance it's gonna start. And our survey says... No, I'm not so lucky. I assume that we still don't have a 5 volt standby rail. Yeah, still 1 volt. Okay. So my inclination is to replace these three resistors in the top left here. Um, and let's see if we can do that without replacing the chip and see if it comes good. I think the chip works, but its feedback resistors are busted. Okay, let's get the heat down on these. So we're going to remove, I'm going to get all four resistors in the top left, just for good measure. And I tell you what, just for funsies, I'm going to get that guy there as well, because I didn't check that one. And it doesn't look as bad as the others, but we'll just get all of them in that effect affected splot that we saw. So I'll put down some um, flux on that area. And I'm just going to hot air all of these off the board. I have a donor board to hand, which has all of those um, components present, so we don't need to really preserve any of these. Um, yeah, no, I'm just going to take them off. I would be very tempted to, um, I'd be very tempted to try and put them to one side so we can measure them, but ugh, man, it, these things are 0201 resist resistors. They are tiny, and I don't feel like trying to measure them. I might change my mind in a minute. We'll see. They look very big on the screen, but just because I always try to do this, just to remind people, but um, here's my thumbnail for reference. I lied, that's my little fingernail. So yeah, these are very, very small. If you put one of these on the tip of your finger, you will barely be able to see it. My hot air is currently at 420 degrees, and I'm at I'm at 35% um, air at the moment. Very easy to blow these things away, so I'm just going nice and slow and steady. It does mean that it's taking a bit longer to warm up, but it means there's a lot less drama. I'm seeing some gunge underneath the ISL chip there. I think we're going to have to reflow that. I'm almost tempted to say it's more likely to be the chip at this point. Here we go. Oops, goodbye. Okay, well, my attempt to try and keep them all on hand didn't go very well. I'm going to make a quick attempt just to measure these. Okay, there's a 20k resistor. That's probably R7560. That guy's not giving me a reading. I'm having trouble pressing on the connect on the terminals though. That might be open circuit. Yeah, I think that resistor is dead. That's unusual. They're pretty tough resistors because they're such simple devices. And that's a 100k. That's 10 ohms. Uh, there was a 10 ohm resistor there. And that's R7563. So I didn't find a 10K, which was R7561, 
So that might be the dead one, or it might be the one that got blown away off the board. So yeah, either way, we definitely think we've got a bad resistor out of those ones. Okay, right, I'm going to... We're going to flux and boil this chip. So I'll put flux all the way around that. And I'm also going to pre-flux my donor board. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring this board up to temperature and just get that chip reflowing. So we're going to give this like 70% air now. And then I'm going to start picking I'm going to start picking donor resistors off of my donor board. So we're going to bring this up to enough temperature just so I can tap it. And that'll just make sure that those solder joins up there are good. They look pretty good to me. I think just having the flux there will just boil out any nastiness that's there. There we go. That's ready. Oop. All right. So I just gave that a little tap. And you just saw it move and go back again. Oh, God. This is going to be nightmarish. Okay, we're going we're gonna to hot swap boards. Here we go. Normally what I'd do for this is I'd have the donor board off off the microscope, but because these resistors are so small, I need the microscope to see what I'm doing. Okay, there's one. So now I'm going to have to put that down, move that, and come in again. This is not ideal. Shit, I need uh, flux. Any second now, I'm going to feel the tweezers snip as I drop this uh, resistor. Right. Airflow down to 40%. And more flux. It's so easy to blow these resistors away that I want each one to actually be flowing on the pads before I go to the next. If there was just like a bunch of capacitors, I would just place them all down at the same time. But if you catch these at just slightly the wrong angle, it'll just it'll just vanish. It'll just disapparate. It'll be gone. It's trying to tombstone. The funny thing is that the capacitor, which is bigger, is ready to go, but also it's got more thermal mass, which means it stays molten more easily. Whereas these tiny little resistors, the moment they lose a tiny bit of heat, okay, that's good enough. The moment they lose a tiny bit of heat, that's it. They they just stop flowing, which is what, one of the things that makes it very awkward to work on them. Right, I'm going to go into focus mode while I do the rest of these now. You've seen me do one. Let's go fast. Shit. Oh, and like that, it's gone. Right, it's still on the tweezers. We're good. Hold on. Recovery operation. You still see it, folks? 
that's good enough. We'll reflow and nudge all of these one last time in a moment. I just want them sufficiently on the board that they won't blow away. I need a bit more air. 50%. Oh. Right, coming in with more air now. Get the whole area moving. Oh, steady. There we go. All right, that looks a lot nicer than it did before. The solder joins around the ISL are not fantastic, but they are present and correct, so I'm going to send it. Let's see how we go. Right, power on. Uh, all going to plan, we should get band spin. Let's see what happens. We have band spin. Love to see it. It's power cycling, but that's fine. That's normal. As you can see from the power meter, it's actually pulling real power for something that's actually trying to do stuff. That's the second power cycle. Should come on on the third attempt now. And as you can see, the current meter, uh, it spiked up as it turned on and now it's settled down at a steady state. Um, so the board has now posted. I can hear the fan ramping up to high speed because it's missing thermal sensors from the trackpad and stuff like that. Um, and if we give it long enough, it'll go to the no boot device found menu because um, there's no there's no SSD in there. Happy days. Good. We are very much WinRAR. Um, let's put this back in the laptop and we should get a picture. All right, let's fire it up. If I can open it. All right, show me that Apple logo. We have fan spin again. And as you can see, we've got power. There's the power cycle. It could probably do another one of those. Yeah. There's a chime. There's an Apple logo. Love to see it. Oh, celebratory stretch. <sighs> okay, so um, a lot of dust ingress into this laptop was trapping moisture. Um, I don't think there was a liquid. This was liquid damage, but I don't think it was a liquid spill per se. Um, what I think this was is just humidity was just trapping moisture in the laptop, and that led to just corrosion on those particular points. Um, whether this was a result of it being in a humid environment is difficult to tell or not. Sometimes you see this where people have like had the laptop in the bathroom next to the bath so they're watching Netflix while they're sitting in the bath or something like that. Other times maybe the laptop um, was it when it was left in a cold place you know if you um, if, if it if it sits in the boot of a car on a long car journey and it's really cold in the boot of that car or it was left in there overnight then you bring it indoors ice cold laptop comes indoors condensation forms and the dust just holds on to that condensation and doesn't let it evaporate that's the kind of thing that can lead to the sort of damage that we've seen here so that's my guess as to what happened um, that condensation or moisture had formed on the ISL chip that is responsible for generating the 3.3 volt power rail resulting in there being no 3.3 volt power rail uh, as you can see, we've gone into password recovery because it's had a couple of false starts. Uh, if I restart this, that'll come good and it'll go to the um, password screen. And we've got a nice healthy two and a half amps of current draw where it's charging its battery. 
So thank you everyone for watching. And I will see you all in the next time. Thank you as always to the channel of subscribers, the Patreons, the Twitch subscribers, and everyone else who contributes or just watches the videos. See you next time, everyone. Bye.